episode is only it's about the faithful servant. The parable comes in three parts and under three different titles. Creatures in heaven, watchful servants, and the faithful and the unfaithful servant. The parable is narrated in the three synoptic gospels in Mark, in Matthew, and also in Luke. What is a parable? Is it a, an enigma, a mystery, a secret, a figure of speech, a metaphor, a fable, a comparison, an allegory, a sim symbol, a representation, or an il illustration? Parables are from Koine Greek, the common language, not the classic Greek, or the modern Greek, the common language in the time of Jesus. The Greek word parable in the Synoptic Gospel means similar image and comparison, somewhat related to what Jesus wanted to teach. A parable is not, is not to be taken literally, because it's a thought-inspiring image that Jesus used to help us to think and ponder about what he wanted us to understand from his teachings. The Greek word paroimia, in the Gospel of John, means a figure of speech. The word parable was never, never used in his Gospel. There are no parables in the Gospel of John, but there are some figures of speech, paroimia, that Jesus used according to John. Here are some examples. I am the life of the world. I am the gate for the sheep. For the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the real vine, and my father is the gardener. Those are parables, not parables. Why is it so important to understand the parables? Because Jesus said so. When he explained the parable of the sower, this is what he said. Don't you understand this parable? How then will you ever understand any parable? This is from Mark of chapter 4, verse 13. Jesus was indeed asked by his disciples why he used parables when he talked to the people. And he did answer from Matthew 13, 10, and also 13, 17. The disciple came to Jesus and asked him, why do you use parables when you talk to the people? The reason I use parables and talking to them is that they look, but do not see. And they listen, but do not hear or understand. So the prophecy of Isaiah applies to them. The people will listen and listen, but not understand. They will look and look, but not see, because their minds are dull. And they have stopped they up their ears and have closed their eyes. Otherwise, their eyes will see, their ears will hear, and their minds will understand. And they will turn to me, says God, and I would heal them. As for you. How fortunate you are, your eyes see and your ears hear. I assure you that many prophets and many of God's people wanted very much to see what you see. But they could not, and to hear what you hear, but they did not. And Matthew, this is why I speak to them in parables. This is in nutshell what he said. Then, was Jesus using a deceptive teaching method to confuse some people? Not even a chance. There is an inherent risk to assume that when Jesus quoted Isaiah 6, 9, 10 to answer the question and about why he used parables to talk to the people in Matthew 13, 10, he meant that he didn't want some people to understand what he said. No, that's not it. I just can't imagine Jesus intentionally confusing people. You must never forget that Jesus came to redeem every person who accepts him and his message in the new covenant with his father and to be his companions in the kingdom of God. It would be absurd, it makes no sense whatsoever, to think that the son of God came to confuse somebody. His message was intended for all. When Jesus used parables to communicate with the people, he had three different audiences. The average people, the group, that probably was the main reason why Jesus spoke in parables in order to make it easier for them to understand complicated themes like salvation and the kingdom of God. 
by explaining it with images from everyday life that they could relate to and understand by comparison. Mark 4, 34, we read Jesus preached his message to the people using many of the parables like this. He told them as much as they could understand. He will not speak to them without using parables. But when he was alone with his disciples, he would explain everything to them. His disciples, in the second group, they were in the learning stage. And when he was alone with them, he would explain his parables so they could use it later in their mission to evangelize all nations with his message of salvation and the kingdom of God. The third group, the others who are on the outside, those are the ones that would listen to his teachings and parables and see his miracles, but refuse, refuse to understand and accept his message. Why they didn't understand Jesus? There is an important difference between what you said about the other people who will not understand him according to Matthew. He said, because their minds are dull and they have stupid they uh, up the stop up uh, their ears and have closed their eyes. And what Messiah said, God told him to do to the people. And he said to me, make the, their, the minds of these little dull, the ear deaf and their eyes blind, so they cannot see or hear or understand. If they did, they might turn to me and be healed. What is the big difference here? between what Jesus said and what Isaiah said. We can clearly say that according to the prophet Isaiah, God's intention then was to punish the people and not to give them the opportunity to hear, see, or understand anything, because if they did, they, they might turn to him and be healed. Maybe we can question that uh, the decision uh, according to the prophet Isaiah, but that's what the Bible says. But if we read Matthew, we can see that Jesus recognized that the other people, Jewish leaders and the religious hierarchy of the time, will not understand him, not because it was a punishment from God, but because they choose to close their eyes and ears and their mind was dull. So what did Mohisero of the church tell us about the purpose of the parables? The Catechism, paragraph 546, we read Jesus' invitation to enter his kingdom comes in the form of parables a characteristic feature of his teaching. Through his parables, he invites people to the feast of the kingdom, but he also asks for a radical choice. To gain the kingdom, one must give everything. Or that not enough, deeds are required. The parables, the parables are like mirrors for men. Will he be hard soil or good earth for the world? What use? Has he made of the talents he has received? The talents, the talents again that he has received. Jesus and the presence of the kingdom in this world are secretly at the heart of the parables. One must enter the kingdom, that is, become a disciple of Christ, in order to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. For those who stay outside, those who stay outside, everything, everything remains enigmatic. And here's the gospel for this Sunday, the gospel of kingdom. Riches in heaven from Luke 12, 32 to 34. Do not be afraid, little flocks, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell all your belongings and give the money to the poor. Provide for yourself persons that don't do wear out and save your riches in heaven. They will never decrease because no thief can get to them and no moth can destroy them. For your heart, your heart will always be where your riches are. Watch your servants. Be ready for whatever comes to first for action and with your lamps lit. Like servants who are waiting for the master to come back from a wedding feast. When he comes and knocks, they will open the door for him at once. How happy are those servants whose master finds them awake and ready when he returns? I tell you, he will take off his coat and have 
them sit down and we'll wait on them. Why should I run? How happy I are if he finds them ready? How happy are they if he finds them ready? Even if he should come at midnight or even later. And you can be sure that if the owner of a house knew the time when the thief will come, he would not let the thief break into the house. Here is a comparison, okay? And you too must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you are not expecting him. Peter say, Lord, does this parable apply to us or do you mean it for everyone? The faithful and the unfaithful servant, the third part. Uh, the Lord answered, who then is the faithful and wise servant? And then he answers, he is the one that his master will put in charge to run the household and give the other servants their share of the food at the proper time. How happy that servant is if his master finds him doing this when he comes home. Indeed, I tell you, the master will put that servant in charge of all his property. But if the servant says to himself that his master is taking a long time to come back, a long time to come back, and if it means to be the other servants, both the men and the woman, and eat and drink and get strong, then the master will come back one day when the servant does not respect him, and at a time he does not know. The master will cut him in pieces, or another translation will say, or throw him out. In other translation, in other translation is this is clearer, or throw him out. The master will throw him out and make him sure the fate of the disobedient, the servant who knows what his master wants him to do, but do not get himself ready to do it, will be punished with a heavy whipping. But the servant who does not know what his master wants, and yet does something for which he deserves a whipping, he will be heavily punished with a light white whipping, which is required from the person to whom much is given, much more is required from the person to whom much more is given. So a lot is required from the person to whom much is given. And what is this gospel about? Let's think about this for a minute. They constructed the gospel to find the people, the characters, the facts, items, and activities related in the parable. Do not be afraid, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. So calm down. Your father is pleased and ready to give you the kingdom. Do not store up riches for yourself here on earth. Instead, store up riches for yourself in heaven. For your heart will always be where your, your riches are. If your heart is riches, getting riches on earth, that's where your heart will be. Instead, store riches for yourself in heaven. There is a master who went to a wedding feast and his servant had to wait for him to open the door, even if he comes late. If the master finds them awake and ready when he returns, he will be satisfied and the servants will be happy. You too must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you are not expecting him. And Peter asked the question, Lord, does this parable apply to us? Or do you mean it for everyone? And the Lord answered, who then is the faithful and wise servant? He is the one that his master will put in charge to run the household and give the other servants their share of the food at the proper time. How happy is it that servant is if his master finds him doing this when he comes home? The master will come back one day when the servant does not expect him. The servant who knows what his master wants him to do but does not get himself ready and do it will be punished. But the servant who does not know what his master wants does something for which he deserves punishment, he will also be castigated, punished with less severity because uh, much is required 
from, from the person to whom much is given. And much is more is required from the person to whom much more is given. In this gospel, the Lord is teaching us, and we should be able to identify and understand at least, at least eight important teachings. There are more. This is number one, we are not to be afraid for our, our Father is pleased to give us the kingdom of heaven. In Luke 10, 9, uh, chapter 10, verse 9, we read the kingdom of God is at hand. We can reach it. Teacher number two, do store up riches for yourself in heaven, not here on earth, because your heart will always be where your riches are. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be, from Luke 12, verse 34. Teacher number three, the master who went to a wedding feast is Jesus. The servants who have to wait for him, even if he close late, are all his disciples throughout history. Nobody knows when the second coming will take place. Nobody. Just the Father. Vision number four. Jesus will come again in all his glory. We must be always ready, like the faithful and wise servants, that the master finds waiting for him, and do what we are supposed to do, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when we are not expecting him. So it's a surprise return. Nobody knows except the Father. Did you know number six, some of Jesus' disciples were discouraged then because they were on the duty belief that the Lord would come soon. And he didn't. They were waiting for him. Uh, and they were discouraged. Where is he? So the writers of the uh, Synopsy Ghost were, are making things very clear. He will come back. But we don't know when. And our duty is to always be prepared to receive him by doing what he told us to do. He will come back. We need to be ready. Issue number seven. The question from Peter, Peter about uh, is this parable apply only to them or to everyone was answered by the Lord with another question and an answer. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Yeah, he's the one that his master will put in charge to run the household and give it to the other servant their share of the food at the proper time. This is number eight, a final warning from the Lord in this parable. Much is required from the person to whom much is given. Much more is required from the person to whom much more is given. For the person who has nothing, the person who has something will be giving more so that he will have more and enough. But uh, for the person who has nothing, will have taken away from him even the little he has. From Matthew 13, 12. This is a clear reference to the parables of the talents, the talents that we get, we got from God that we were supposed to use to the benefit of other people. God's word for work. The world needs your talents in Matthew 25, 14 to 48. The world needs your talents. Inside the Every human being, there are treasures to unlock. Everybody has talents. Some key concepts that you may find useful to remember. 
do not be afraid, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom, but uh, do not store up riches for yourself here on earth. Instead, store up riches for yourself in heaven, because your heart will always be where your riches are. The master is Jesus, who will come again in all his glory, and the disciples don't know when, but have to be ready and wait for him, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you are not expecting him. The parable applies to everyone who wants to be his disciples and to the one who accepts him as the Lord and believe in him. Much is required from the person to whom much is given and much more is required from the person to whom much more is given. So let me ask you some brief uh, review questions. Who is the master in this parable? Why well, it is so important to understand the parables? What is the main message of this parable? Why do the disciples have to be always ready? Who knows when the second coming of Jesus will take place? Who are these parable intended receivers? The apostles or everybody? What is required from the person to whom much is given? Reference we're taking from the Good News Translation, GNT Catholic Bible, and from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And uh, some references from this mini workshop were partially taken from the book Understanding Jesus' Miracles and Parable. This is Alejandro Burgos from El Paso, Texas. And this was uh, the Gospel for this Sunday. I see you next Sunday. Please don't forget.